I'm back home now and it gives me a chance to have a closer look at this bike. So as I said, it's a Kawasaki KH 1997. It's actually mostly original because there's a few things around it that would be very hard to restore or get back to the condition they're in. So here is the front wheel and this is a date code. You can see it says Japan and Taka Sago and the, that's the 18 times 1.4 and then this is the date code the 304 Japan 502 and I've come across these before these date codes and they are a huge deal and um, that's a really promising sign then there's a few more things around so just the finish of the aluminium and so on this would be really hard to recreate if you restored a bike this one is actually polished and that would have been a factory finish and I think this is probably original which is really cool I'm going to make a start on working on this bike and I think what I'm going to do first is just start stripping down this side take out some bolts I don't feel like they're in very significantly hard there's one missing there so I'll have to find a replacement these are it looks like there might be stainless steel bolts I've got my rubber hammer and I'm just going to give it a little tap just see if that, that does anything hasn't done so far let me just pull this up and see if that helps I, I've not worked on one of these bikes before so I'm going to have to find my way as I go that okay that looks like it will help okay wow this is something very different so I've literally never ever seen a bike like this before and it just makes me even more excited the carburetor is inside the engine casing okay I didn't see that coming I mean I really didn't see that coming normally the carburetor would be here but this bike has like got an air box there and it's going down into the engine and then somehow coming in here like I just don't get it I'm gonna to have to look online and see what this is all about the carburetor is inside the engine casing I'll be blown I'm not selling this bike this is a collectible Wow okay the carburetor's inside the engine so we all learned something today I've never ever ever seen a bike like this and I must have owned literally hundreds if not over a thousand probably um, so I think I have to take this off so I'm going to cut the camera while I figure out what to do next well I guess the easiest thing to do is just to take off this engine case since I've already got my tool and it looks like it might just be three more bolts so let's have a go at that what a great bike I'm really really liking this one an original I think bike from 1997 with a carburetor inside the engine like wow that's cool so that's quite a long bolt and let's take that one off see what this looks like inside wow and it's such great condition as well like you can see someone has been in here and done some stuff this I guess would be an oil pump it looks like um, I don't really know but it, I think that this would be an oil intake into an oil pump here and then it's pumping oil across under there so maybe the next thing I'll do is just start taking this apart which is the clutch and uh, I might as well just keep taking parts off and try and remember where they all went now that carburetor being in that engine case is a completely new thing for me I've never seen that before if you know what this is called this kind of bike let me know in the comments I'm blown away so I've had to do something that I normally never do this is called an owner's manual and this one's clearly been very well used and it's going to be a bible for me on this one and so here's a pretty interesting diagram and it shows me what I need to do so the guy told me the mechanic from Kawasaki he said the rotary disc valve is broken and I don't really know what that is but this book says to access and take off the rotary disc valve I need to take off all of this stuff first and the first thing to do apparently is to remove the oil tank so let's do that right now to take off the oil pump which apparently I need to do I first need to take off this side cover and it looks like it's just a case of undoing this screw and then that will pop out 
Now the manual says that I should remove the seat, but I don't think I will. I think I'm just going to pop that down there if I can and undo that hose. Try not to spill oil over the place. Now, because this is sealed, what I'm doing is I'm just tipping my oil tank down there and I'll hold it there for a few seconds to just drain all the oil down if I can. And surely some will fall out there, but that's all right. To undo the exhaust, I just have to gain access over here to two 10 millimeter but, uh, nuts, which hold it on. So I'll take those off. And, and I should be able to just pop this exhaust off, but let's see, famous last words. Yeah, I'll just do that. Give this a bit of a, a wiggle, as we say in the business. Put that there. And I think this whole exhaust will just pull out behind. And now I can just remove this exhaust by popping that off and putting it out of the way. <laughs> well, I took all the bolts out and I thought, what's all this dripping? And of course it's oil because I forgot to drain the engine oil first. So that was special of me. And then it would be nice to get the engine free of oil before I take it apart so my floor doesn't get bashed up. And there, there's, there's the oil there, just falling down. And I'll just give it a couple of minutes to fully drain out. While I wait for the oil to drain out, I'm going to take off this side stand. It looks like it's just a size 12 and it will just give me a bit better access. I should be able to just slide it off, but I'll have to turn it first it looks like. So if I just do that and just pop it off nice and easy, I don't want to be breaking anything. If I can just pop this off, there you go, lovely. So that's my side stand off. I'm still waiting for the oil to drain, so I thought I might as well try and undo this carp. And I've just undone a little screw which is in there, and I'm going to pull this off, and that's pretty good. And then if I take this off, which would be the petrol hose in, and this is the cable that goes to the oil pump for a 23 year old bike, that is exceptional. So really really cool and this bike I feel like I've done really well because someone has done a lot of hard work on this already one two there and there's another one just over here let's see oh no <laughs> classic error this whatever this is just fell in my oil so that's not cool so I guess I have to leave that there my fingers are full of oil this is that this is the life I lead guys it's got oil on my fingers everywhere but anyway right so it looks like this will just pop off there it is all comes off in one piece and hard to do without all my hands but actually I'll just put you down for a sec I don't want to damage anything I just want to pull this oil or sorry this petrol pipe through to do that I need to just remove a little clip and then gently does it I'll just remove that up and out and I've flicked everyone with petrol but that's fine then that can just sit there on the floor so that's fine so now you can see my side casing is there it's still connected up to the clutch uh, so that's fine and now this is where we are this is the old engine oil which I pulled out of the bike and the next logical thing for me to do to prevent further disasters is I've got this old washing uh, powder a uh, washing liquid bottle and you can see that I can just take off this cap which is why I use these milk bottles and I can if I can catch it catch it on camera I will just lift up my whole milk bottle drain it into my waste oil reservoir and that's a future problem taken care of and I can just leave that like that for a minute and it'll drain out most of the oil so that's pretty cool and then the next thing for me to tackle is to get this clutch off and it's just six 
eight millimeter bolts, which should be pretty easy to get off. So I'll just do those now. So I just, I mean, this is where a power tool would come in quite handy because I can just blast all these once I've got them loose, but they're only small now. They won't take a second to come out. All right, so that's the sixth bolt out of the way. And there are these six springs like this. So this is the clutch uh, hub and it looks like there's just a little clip in here that I need to pry off. I mean, this doesn't look very good to me, but hey, I've never worked on this bike before. So it kind of feels like I've just got to pry this off. I mean, this just doesn't feel good at all. Um, this bike really, I feel like it should be more solid, but if I can just pry that little clip off. Okay, so there's that. Okay, so that's popped off, there it is. Drop it in my oil again. So I need to remember where all this stuff was and I think this whole thing should just pull off. I think all of these plates will pull out. Let's have a go. There we go. Giving it a wiggle, my favorite term. Okay, so that looks good. So I've got off these clutch plates and I'll just leave them all like that. And this also will come off and I'll put it all together and then that, okay, that will just pull off. So good. So my owner's manual must've been for an older bike because that is different to what it said that I should do. So I need to take off this plate and I'm worried that the screws will thread and I was going to do it off camera, but I thought, no, that's not what I do. So I want to give a, like just some advice if you guys want it as to how to do a job like this. So get one of these heads that fits really well to whatever screw you're taking out. This one doesn't fit that well, but it's the best one I can find right now. And I'll just try and do one. Get a metal hammer and hammer it in to the screw. And what that does is it kind of will loosen off and hopefully crack any corrosion or um, bits. And you can see that's just easily come out now. And then I just loosen that off because it's gone into the head. And I'll just try and do this one without hammering. That's not going to go. So I'm going to hammer it here as well. If you thread one of these screws, you're going to be in a world of trouble. So hammering it in with a hammer really helps it. Honestly, it will crack the threads. So there you go. That one has moved really easily. And I'll just move around and I'll just hammer. Honestly, this this hammering um, the screwdriver in will save you so much trouble because it just cracks. If the bolt is in there and it's all corroded, the hammer action will literally break all the corrosion apart. And so it'll stop the metal sticking to itself. And then you can just turn all your screws and you can see they're all coming out. So I'll just go around and do the rest now. And now I can just pull out all these screws with my hand hammer, uh, my screwdriver. I've undone all those screws and this should just come off. And I'll just try and really carefully pry it. And that seems to be working. I can just come from a couple of sides. I've got to be really careful here not to damage anything. I think I need to actually remove this chuck key. And go back to my other screwdriver and just get a little bit of leverage. That'll go. Now this, this is what we can see. This is called the rotary valve. And it does look a bit battered, to be honest. It's all pitted and stuff. I'm gonna have to have a look into what that needs. But in the meantime, that seal actually looks very good. That looks new, so I think someone's changed that. This seal doesn't look bad, that looks all right. Uh, what else have we got? This doesn't look that clever. And I've got a feeling that that bit of play there is our problem. That would definitely be a reason why the engine sounded terrible, which is what the guy said, he said it ran but it sounded terrible and I think 
that that little bit of play there may be our problem. So I'm going to have a look at that. I've done a bit of prying with a screwdriver and this little, whatever this is called, bushing has come off and there's a little rubber seal. The rubber seal was sort of inside this and it was all on there so I need to remember to put those all back on. And then I think I can just give this a little bit of a pull and maybe it'll come off. Okay, so there's that, whatever that is called, some sort of gear with a little tooth, a little tooth in it. I mean, this doesn't look that good. I think all of these parts are kind of worn. But now that's off. So now I'm, I'm sort of free on the crankshaft and just turning it. The top end sounds terrible. I think that's what I'm going to do next is take that apart. So I think what I'm going to do is just leave that alone. And what I'm going to buy is all of these parts basically, if I can find them. That one, that one, that one, and this nut. I'm going to buy all of them brand new. And on this part, which is the, this is the uh, rotary valve cover. I'm just gonna buy new seals while I'm in there. I might as well. Okay, I've undone four 14 millimeter bolt uh, nuts, which are on here. They should just squeeze off. I'm trying to be careful so I don't damage any paint or anything, but I'm also trying to film. So that will just lift off all in one go. This is called the cylinder head. So let's put that down there and let's have a look inside here. I can see it's a bit dark I'm going to get some better lighting in here um, but basically we want to see what condition this is in so that's a pretty new looking gasket which is nice in fact what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull this whole thing off because it's got to come off I need to have a look and see what's happening so let's just remove this then and that gasket can just fall down there for a second I'll we'll just pull this whole thing off and see how it looks underneath. I love these old two strokes, so easy to work on. That looks free. Why won't it move? Right, there you go, done. Okay, so let's have a look in this cylinder. So that cylinder has certainly seen better days. Normally, if you rebuild a bike like this, you would um, get this rehomed right. Let me show you inside. So I can just pick up some light. It's hard to see, but there's like, you see there, there's like scoring down the side of it. That is not good. Um, so this cylinder, you can see here maybe a bit better. You can see the scoring down that side. So this cylinder needs to be re, uh, re-bored or re-honed. Um, and while I've got it off, I might do some paintwork on it, but that's where that is. So, there you go. That's the piston. This is the Conrod. And that in there is called a Gudgeon pin. Now they should all be super, super tight. They're like machined to really high tolerances. What you shouldn't be able to do is move the conrod up and down. So let's play in the, I think it's in the grudgeon pin, which is this part here. I'll just try and, okay, so that is excellent for me. There's no real play. There's a bit of side to side play. There's no real up and down play in the um, conrod itself, but the piston is just all over the place. It's just loose. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna whip out the, uh, the piston and the grudgeon pin. Before I do that though, you have to put newspaper and stuff around because if, if something goes down in your bottom end, that is just going to be a world of pain you don't want to be in. So a cloth is better really, but I've just got some newspaper handy. And I'm just going to stuff a load of newspaper all around so that if anything falls, hopefully it will fall somewhere else. And I'm going to just knock my grudging pin through, but I've really got to support my piston. So I need more hands. 
I'll just try and slip my hand there and I'm going to just support it so it doesn't put any pressure on the um, con rod and just okay so supporting the con rod being really careful not to do it also I'm pulling it down into these studs because that'll give it some support and then I'm just gonna give that a knock and that I can feel that pin coming through now so there you go that's through and that piston will just lift off Okay, so there's my piston and I mean the guy said this was new, it doesn't look that good to me. So I'm gonna change that as well. Now then, this is my gudgeon pin top end. And I'm just gonna continue knocking this through with my little hammer. I can just show you that. So just knock that through. And this is the gudgeon pin. And I want to just have a look at this because where it intersects with my, um, this, these are called the small end bearings, these little bearings, they're called the small end bearings and they just don't feel very tight. So that actually doesn't feel too bad on there. Maybe it's in here, hopefully not. Oh dear. So they are loose in the conrod, which is not good. That's definitely what I don't want because I don't want to have to change the conrod. Okay, so I'm going to buy one of them, one of them, new piston, and I'm going to get the cylinder reboard. Wow, what a great little bike and what a cool project this has been so far. So I've pulled off the side casing and I've had a look at those parts that the Kawasaki mechanic said were dodgy and they do look a bit dodgy. The top end also looks a bit dodgy, so I'm going to order a load of parts to rebuild this thing, but they will take some time to come. So I'm gonna to have to wrap this video now, and I'll see you guys for part two, probably in a few weeks time, when the new parts have come and I can have a chance to shoot the new video. So that'll be that. Great little bike, what a find. I'm looking forward to rebuilding it and going for a ride on the road and just testing the power and just having a blast this thing this thing's going to be really fun it weighs 96 kilos and it's got a two-stroke power band engine so it's going to be sick i can't wait see you there thanks for watching please hit that subscribe button i'd love to get to a thousand subs so help me out there please and i'll see you on the next one see ya